and pursuing something. When I chase something, the object that I chase really does not want to be caught. Come on. That's right. That's why it's a chase, because it runs off. Mm -hmm. But when I pursue something, it is attainable, but it takes an intentional focus of my, my why. Mm -hmm. Pursuit requires a critical question, brothers and sisters. Why do I want to get married? Why do I want to preach and teach? Why do I want this career? Pursuit requires a why. Mm -hmm. Everything in your life that is attainable, everything that is noteworthy, every goal in your life, you must be fueled with a why or you will give up. And then when you give up, you will start to chase stuff that you follow. Lord. You'll start chasing stuff that you should not be chasing when you could have kept pursuing if it is you would have stayed with your wife. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we're chasing the wrong thing. We can chase the wrong people. We can chase the wrong ideas. Some of us are chasing love. Yeah. Everybody wants love, but when it is that I have to chase love, hmm. that's when it becomes it becomes a problem. Yeah, kind of reminds me, I don't know, uh, we, we got some maybe older uh, people in, 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 in uh, our audience this morning. Uh, you remember a popular cartoon, The Roadrunner? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The Roadrunner, it had for about 71 years. Watch this here. When the wily coyote used to chase Oh, <laughs> the wily coyote, I'm setting you up here, uh, uh, used to chase uh, uh, the roadrunner uh -huh. for 71 years. Never really caught up with the roadrunner, right. but yet he would chase him every week, brother, brother Bitch, right before Soul Train. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right before Soul Train, uh, and it came on. Uh, he, he would, the cartoons used to come on on Saturday and then, then Soul Train for you, for you, for you younger fellas, uh, people. Uh, uh, so, anyhow, he chased them for 71 years, but never really caught up with the road brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sad part about that is uh, uh, when people chase other individuals, the problem is with them slightly psych psychologically. Mm. See, the problem is. Uh, that they have never really caught up with themselves and they chase out of desperation. Yes. Mm. It's possible to live in the same home and still be chasing someone. Mm. Oh Lord have mercy. I Amen. Right there. Amen. It's possible to live in the same place with someone and have the same last name and mentally and emotionally you're still chasing somebody. Mm. Mm. Man. <laughs> See, the road runner and the coyote, they would run around and run around and run around, but they were in a desert place. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know about you, but the, 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 a desert place is, is, is a bad place, it's a horrible place to make a relationship decision. That's right. Okay. Yeah. right. Yes, it is. <laughs> Look, uh, Watch this here. You can't make a road runner out of a housewife. Mm. Yeah. You, 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 you can't make a road runner out of a husband because you will free, you will spend three frustrating decades chasing after them. Uh -huh. If you met them chasing them, you continue to chase them. Mm. You'll be like Wiley Coyote. For 71 years, mm -hmm. continuing to chase something wow. that you never did, never do want to be caught. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes we're drained, my brothers and sisters, in our families. Because we, when it is that we're chasing love, it depletes your energy. Okay. When you're chasing attention, it depletes your energy. Yes, mm. And then you come to worship and you've been arguing because someone wants something that the other one does not want and that causes a depletion of energy. Mm. And then you come to worship and I can't give God my all because my idea of love is tainted. Mm. And when, I, when it is, uh, uh, if I got to chase this love over here, I'm slipping mad at God because God won't fix my wife 
and God won't make her love me back the way I want to be loved. So God, I'm going to take it out on you in worship and I'm not going to give you all of me until you do what I want you to do. But God says you're going to have to make it up in your mind that you're done chasing it. Amen. Because whatever it is that you got, whatever it is that you decide to pursue, that means you have a chance to be able to obtain it. But if you're chasing it, that means the person does not want them. They don't want to be caught. Mm -hmm. Be careful of those who fall in love with you doing tax season and stimulus chase. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because they can want you for the wrong reason. Be careful when it is that you got your son in the, watch this here, independent women and even independent men have to be careful when you got it going on. You got your, 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 your savings and your 401k and you got, you got your, your house and you got cars and you got all of this stuff set up and here comes this dog on Sally and here comes Billy and wants to go and they so in love because they didn't keep what all they get from it. Mm. Yes, sir. Then you spend the rest of your time chasing them, but you showed your car too early. That's right. Huh. See, when you show your car too early, everybody's attracted to whatever they can get. Mm -hmm. And most people, man, they're looking for a bailout package, a stimulus package, where it is that they can bail out. You bail them out of their problems. That's right. Good point. And you know, all you want them to do is just love you. Will you just love me? Will you just talk to me? Will you just take me out? Maybe this is the wrong sermon. I don't know. Will you just help me out? I'm trying to work for the Lord. Why do I have to chase you and help me work for the Lord? Amen. Amen. It's frustrating when you're trying to work for the Lord and you got somebody you got to beg to be motivated with you to love the Lord just like you do. Amen. Feel like you're chasing. That's how the Lord Jesus feels. Right. Mm -hmm. When it is, we sit in worship and we can't, amen? That's right. When we can't get happy about the service. Amen. When we don't have a joy about what God has amen. done for us. Amen. He says, I'm done chasing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to chase you. Here, I stand at the door. I'm knocking, but you got to open up your heart for me. Amen. And let me in. Yes, you can't make anybody love you. You can't make anybody believe in that. You can't make nobody want to be with you. It has to be a choice lest you become chasing it. Yes, sir. That can go from a grandson to a son or daughter or whatever. They have to want to be with you. Amen. Most people are brothers and sisters. Sometimes, like uh, Philip here, the spirit led him to a dry place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says that uh, the Spirit of the Lord after Philip was uh, evangelizing in, in Samaria and doing what it is that God told him to do, then God sends the Spirit, God puts the Spirit in his heart He says, uh, uh, Philip, I want you to go to a dry place. See, sometimes God will send you to a desert. See, Gaza was a desert. It's a dry place. God, Sister Colbert, sometimes will send you to a dry place sometimes because he wants the distractions to dry up. Amen. Sometimes he puts a dry place in your marriage mm -hmm. because he wants the distractions to dry He's trying to get us to, get, get us to see. Sometimes he puts dry places even yeah. in the church. Because he's trying to get us, he's trying to drive out sometimes the distractions because God sees ahead. All you see is what you want right now. Amen. And the distractions is what sometimes God, he leads you into the desert. But it's in the desert, my brothers and sisters, where you discover yourself with God. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. It's in a dry place where nothing is going on and nobody's calling me and nobody wants my number and nobody wants, it's, it's in that place. But see, that's the place where we start chasing because we don't want to be patient and wait on God. We want it right now. So we start going and we start doing our own thing. Yes, but God is trying to remove the distractions. Yes, sir. And we get in the way of God. Here, Philip, watch verse number 26. 
the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, Lord have mercy. Is the angel speaking to you? Can the angel speak to you? Amen. First of all, uh, the angel won't speak to you, but no, if you're involved in willful sin. That's right. You won't hear from the devil if you continue to walk in sin. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important for us to repent and get out of that so God can have the fellowship with us. Amen. So we have the fellowship with each other so that it is God can download the word to us. Amen. The Bible says the angel of the Lord, where is it, Patrick? It says what? And the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Spoken to Philip. Spoke to Philip. Saying, arise. Saying what? Arise. I don't want you to lay down. Arise. I don't want you to get up. Watch this here. Some of us came to this worship service this morning and we're down. Mm. We're down. We've had an argument at home. We've had something go wrong. We've had family members that came in town and something, you know how family members yeah. get, and they get them ruffled up around by Memorial Day when the cookouts and stuff, and they argue about who's going to go over whose house, and they neglected you because they really didn't want you to come, and somebody's mad right now. Hey. Somebody's mad right now. Somebody's mad right now because somebody didn't do somebody right and watch his hit and, and what it is and you come to the worship down instead of up. Mm. But the spirit of the Lord says arise and go up and go towards the south in the way they go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is the desert. Verse 27, Patrick, is said what? And he arose and went. He arose and went. And behold, behold, a man of Ethiopia. Yes, sir. A eunuch of great authority. A black man in great authority. Amen. Oh, and again, yes. oh hold on, what yes. said. <laughs> See, we have a stigma. Sometimes black people have a stigma, especially black men, that we can't administrate, and we can't organize, and we can't. See, the only thing, only thing we can do is play football and basketball. Mm -hmm. But there are some sharp black brothers out here Amen. that can administrate and think. See, we think because uh, somebody don't do a whole bunch of work, we think, oh, he, he ain't no man because he didn't do no work. But see, being a man starts right here. Amen. See, you can be able to administrate. Watch this here. This is because I didn't move this stand. Don't mean, don't, don't mean I'm not a worker. Because mm -hmm. guess what? Without the vision, the people perish. Amen. We have not learned to appreciate, especially minority men that have administrative skills. That can take a few people and get a whole bunch of gold. Amen. Oh, watch this here. You did it one day. Watch, 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 watch this here. Because watch this here. Uh, uh, when it is that your son or daughter, your grandson do something great, you want everybody to clap. That's right. That's right. God won't let people clap for your grandkids and your kids and you yourself when you don't learn how to clap for somebody else. Amen. 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 Watch this here. So the, can, uh, the Bible says, he uh, held a man in the open, a eunuch. Watch this here. A eunuch, eunuch, eunuch. This man has been castrated. His male part has been removed because he's over the king's power. Right. Right. See, these brothers were players back then, kind of the same way in 2020, but that, that, that was their custom. And, to, and, and, that, and that day, you can have more than one wife. Mm -hmm. You can have a number of wives. Mm -hmm. And what it was, they had to have the king's chamber. He would keep them all in some kind of a condo somewhere, ready on command. So then when you got tired of one, you can put one on the bench. <laughs> I ain't gonna ask you. Ain't gonna ask you. <laughs> but somebody had to be over those, those right. women. So then he would put a man over those women. Mm -hmm. But the, the ironic thing about it, Brother Best, is he put the man over the women, but the condition is you had to have your male part cut off so you won't go and mess with my women. So that what was a, what was a unit. Now watch this here. A king back in that custom did not have, he was too dignified to go do business like 
put in, so he sent the queen, which was Candace. Right. Mm -hmm. He sent Candace down mm -hmm. to take care of that business. Mm -hmm. They went to Jerusalem to worship. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, goes on to say, he was a man of great, great authority, but he was under authority. See, watch this here. Many of us have not learned that you can be given authority. Watch this here. I have authority here. Amen. 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 This church, but I'm still under authority. I can't do anything that I want to do. I still have to abide as the Spirit leads me. I still have to go by His word, lest I become out of, out of order. Amen. Well, that's the same way even in the home. That's the same way even in the church. That's the same way that goes on. Even though you're grown and you have authority. See, one, when, when, when young people really mature, they have a great respect for authority. That's when you really mature. Amen. But once you flex around and think, man, you all in the bag of chips, man, I'm telling you, you miss life. That's right. And people will never give you the major opportunity. They always going to give you the scraps. Because you not learn how to be under authority, right. especially in the church. Amen. Watch this here. This this man was under authority, and, and the Bible says under and under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, and it comes to Jerusalem to worship. Remember, the Jerusalem was the mecca. Mm -hmm. Come to the place to be. Everybody wanted to come. Everybody came and worship in Jerusalem. Watch this here, we almost there. The Bible says, when returning and sitting in his chariot, he read Isaiah. You know what I noticed here, Brother Coleman? It's good to see you, my brother. Uh, this man's dash had just come from worship, but he's still seeking the Lord. He's studying on his own. He's studying on his own. See, you can't wait on Brother Daly just to preach a sermon or teach a lesson. You got to take your own Bible and keep on seeking the Lord. Amen. But you know what happens to us? We're chasing stuff. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us from studying. That's right. right. Come on now. Right. All of us can repent about that. Yeah. Right. Amen. We let family, we let stuff, we let jobs, we let all from our time with God and God says it's not going to happen and I'm going to let you figure it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to frustrate you because I'm going to let you keep on spinning your wheel. It's like going on a treadmill. You keep going and going, but you ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Until you make it up in your mind that I'm trying to chase it. Amen. Watch this. So then he says, uh, verse 29, then the Spirit read uh, read, 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 Pat. It says, then the Spirit said unto Philip, Here stand in the Spirit. Go near uh -huh. and join thyself to this chariot. Yeah, hold right there. You, you can't really. We make the mistake a lot of times of judging people by their position. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's an unbeliever. He's seeking God, mm -hmm. but yet he's riding with a pocket full of money. Mm -hmm. But yet the man of God is walking. That's right. Some of you mm -hmm. ain't gonna catch that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You cannot judge people by their present position in their life. Amen. You cannot judge blessings just because someone has this. We say they blessed. They blessed. They got a big house. They blessed. They blessed. I'm telling you, Philip was the one that was blessed. Amen. Yes, sir. Not just because this man had a government job. This man was blessed because he was doing in the will of God. Amen. As long as you stay in the will of God, you're even blessed. if you ain't got no you're money, right. money, you're blessed. Amen. I'm trying to show you you're blessed. Amen. Stay in the will of God. So the Bible says, one, one more time, uh, Patrick is here. And the Spirit said unto Philip, yeah. go near. He says, go near. Watch this again. He says, go near. Why? We have to be careful to listen to the Spirit. Amen. Good. See, the Spirit tells us what? The Spirit tells us who? The Spirit tells us when. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. If he just would have stood in the desert and stayed in the desert, and he seen his assignment, 
But God tells you when to go in. Amen. Oh, Lord, that's a good teaching right there. Yes. See, there's a, that's, that's where we maximize out our Christianity, when we start yielding to the Spirit of God. But the Spirit can't talk to you unless you spend your time in prayer and study. And that's why the Spirit is not working for you sometimes. Amen. Amen. The Spirit is a power. You have a power within you. The same power that he put in you dead is the same power that he resurrected Jesus with. Amen. Same power that I've been trying to sell it to Christians. Amen. Amen. Why do we not buy into that? Mm -hmm. Why do we get so down? Mm -hmm. Why do we get so distraught when someone, one or two things go bad? Why do we chase stuff? Why do we chase people? Why do we beg people to be with us and love us when God says you're powerful? Amen. And you connected to the power source. Amen. So people have to treat you a certain kind of way because you won't accept nothing else less. That's right. Why? Because you're a king's kid. Amen. You're a child of the most high. See, that's the problem. We don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you knew who you are, there's certain conversations that you won't have. There are certain looks that you won't have. There's some actions that you won't have. You'll never catch an attitude with a preacher because that's the man of God. Amen. Amen. I don't have no reason to catch no attitude with the preacher. He's going to preach the word. If it don't apply to me, I ain't worried about it. Amen. But if it does apply to me, then he ain't trying to talk to me. The Spirit is talking to me. He's just doing his job so he can save his soul. Amen. Now remember, I got a job. Yes, sir. And I got to save my own soul. Amen. And if I don't do what God asked me to do, I'd rather, I, I ain't going to answer to God for that what you see not doing my job. Right. right. So watch this here. So then he said, verse number 28, Patrick, he said, well, he was returning yeah. and sitting in his chariot, yeah. reading Isaiah the prophet. Yes. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, said, Go near, go near, and join thyself, and join thyself to the chariot. To the Spirit. To the chariot. And verse 30 says what? And Philip ran thither to Philip, him. Philip what? Ran. Philip what? Ran. Philip what? Ran. He ran. He chased. He's chasing the chariot. Mm hmm. Oh, hmm. Get it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Red's get it. Yeah. He's chasing the chariot, man. Yeah. But the, but, but the difference in this chase right here is God really, it was not a chase because the man wanted God. He wanted God so bad that he was reading, studying, even after worship. So it was not a chase. This was a pursuit. Yes. Amen. But we spend our time. Watch this here. What's the lesson in this? Never chase anything that God didn't tell you to go out. Amen. Amen. Right. Say it again. That is the reason why a lot of us, even right now, sometimes, we're in the fix that we're in is because the person or situation or career or job or what have you, God never signed off on it telling you to do it. Amen. You chose that knucklehead dude. <laughs> and you want him to change. You want you want him to change. To, look here. You want him to change, but he don't want to change. <laughs> so what do you do? Chase him. <laughs> you want that woman to change and be something that she's not. That's right. So he watch his ear. The critical question would be, if a person is not connected to God and does not want to hear what God said, what are they telling you about being in relationship with them? Mm -hmm. God is saying, I'm done chasing you. I want you to get in your mind and make it up in your mind. I'm done chasing you. But hey, you know what I'm saying? We got three or four homes again. I don't care if you got 20 homes. God can get you another home. Amen. God never wanted you to chase. Right. Amen. He said, watch this here. Even if a man goes after a woman, I pursue a woman, but I never chase a woman. Amen. I never chase a man. Why would you chase something that does not want to be caught? Right. And 
that's why we come to church and we're frustrated because we've been chasing and chasing and we like the wild coyote and the road runner and we've been running, running, running and running, running, running and running, running, running and we're, oh, we're tired. Amen. And we're mad at God but we want God to change him but God is telling you, I'm sending you red flag. That ain't the dude for you. But, but I've been with him five years. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm trying to show you this is the end of the road. <laughs> but we don't want to accept that. Because I got five years invested in, in three houses, sir. Five years and three houses. So God said, it's the five years and the three houses for me. Which one do you want? <laughs> See, watch this here. That's a deep question because that's going to take some internal your examination and say, God, I know who you are. God, I believe you. If this person does not want me, God, if this situation does not want me, I trust you that if it's not this, you're going to bless me with something else. But what it is the devil puts in our mind, you ain't going to find nobody else. That's right. Because you already had five and six failed relationships. And guess what? You don't want to go through another one, do you? Mm -hmm. What are the people are going to say now? People are going to think you can't hold a woman. Mm -hmm. And all of this stuff is going through your mind. And so what you start to chase again. Mm -hmm. But Philip, he waited on the spirit of the Lord before he pursued What are you waiting on? Are you waiting on the spirit of the Lord? Or are you still operating on your own? Mm -hmm. Must be a great sermon. It's real quiet. Amen. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. I close here. Philip ran to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Understand the not the lie and read him. Read it, read it, uh, uh, uh Pat. It says what? And Philip ran to the two him, and How can I? read the prophet Isaiah and yes. say, Understand thou what thou readest. Yes. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide thee? Watch it here. Watch the sister, 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 sister. Watch the miracle right here. If I chase something on my own, set of frustration. Mm -hmm. But when God tells me to chase it, he equips me to go after and pursue it. He, When God tells me to pursue it, he equips me with the necessary tools for me to have it. So yeah. then I don't have all of that going back and forth. Why? Because God, now watch this here. Let me show you. Here's a human that caught up with some thoroughbred horses. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. All <laughs> How can a human man be catch up with some horses and a chariot rolling? Mm -hmm. He had the supernatural power of the Lord. Amen. What am I telling you today? What am I trying to share with you today? I'm sharing with you when it is that you make it up in your mind that I'm done chasing him. I'm done chasing her. I'm done chasing that career. I'm done chasing. If it is that you're chasing something that does not want to be caught. Why don't you back up? Why don't you pray? Why don't you start studying? Why don't you adhere to the signs of the Lord and say, you know what? This might not be for me. Amen. If you don't consider those red flags that God is trying to give you, you will end up, watch this here, I would rather end it at five years and the three houses, or oh, how many houses I say? Three houses in five years, then they go 20 years down the line, and I'm still chasing and, and I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. Now we got to go to divorce court, and I got to spit all of that stuff up that I want when God showed me at five years, at five months, at five weeks, at some people five days. God showed you that this, the dude wasn't, uh, or the woman wasn't no. Really, uh, yeah, he has some good quality. Yeah, she has some nice eyelashes. Yeah, they have some good. Yeah, they can be nice. But watch this here. 
We're making our decisions in the Amen. desert. Mm -hmm. We're making our decisions in a dry place. In a dry place, we most people that we encounter and come up and start hooking up with, we came out of it, out of a bad situation, and we did not want to be lonely. And you can look Amen. straight on that. You don't have to amen. Because I know that to be right. Amen. Most people that we are with right now, we were in a bad situation. We just looking for somebody. We're tired of looking. We tired of going out on dates, and we tired of waiting on the Lord. So I guess what? Oh, 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 Mary came through. <laughs> I met Mary at Walmart. It must be God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to get you to quit chasing me. If it is for, if it is with God, you'll know it. If it is with God, you'll know it. Amen. Because the Spirit will show it, and the Spirit will join you to that person. Amen. See, when the Spirit shows you and joins you to a person, yes, you will have disagreements, but major things you don't disagree about. Amen. Don't, you don't disagree about giving. You don't disagree about the Lord. You don't disagree about coming to church. When the Spirit showed you and joined you to somebody. Amen. But when you choose them, what ends up happening is you're in a dry place in your heart. Mm -hmm. And psychologically, you're scared. Yep. So you keep trying to make, it's like putting together a puzzle. And you keep on trying to make a big old jumbo piece into a little, a little slot like that. You keep on trying to force it. And in trying to force it, you're frustrating yourself. Amen. Amen. You're frustrating God. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're missing out on what God has for you around the corner, riding in the chariot. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, God has something that he wants to join you to in the chariot if you will come out of the desert chasing your own self. Amen. Amen. Watch us here in our clothes. Philip went on to explain the Bible says, well, what verse we left my phone? Patrick, you gotta know. It says what? 31. And he said, How can yeah. I? How can I? Have some mind yes. that should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Verse 35 says what? Then Philip opened his mouth yes. and began at the same scripture uh -huh. and preached unto him. Keep on Jesus. Reading. Keep on reading. And as they went on their and way, they went on their way. They came unto a they certain came unto a certain one. And the eunuch said, The eunuch said, Here is water. Uh huh. What doth hinder me to be baptized? See, watch his ear. God said, Philip, mm -hmm. the eunuch, he had a what? Desire. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you love me, babe, watch his ear. I love you, babe, but do you love me back? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we keep chasing something when we're children of the most high and you realize who you are? I'm trying to get this lesson to you. You realize who you are. You don't have to chase nothing. Stuff will start pursuing you. Amen. Even jobs. Mm -hmm. When it is you live right with the Lord, God will display your talent to where people come looking for you. Amen. God will, will make a situation custom to your skills. He will place you and join you to that place. Amen. Amen. But the unit, I know this thing has been preached the same way 20,000 years uh, uh, about baptism and all that. I'm going to get to that part, but, but I need you to see the other part, uh, the psychological part, where you're at, and then now I'm going to get to the salvation part. Watch this here. So then he says in verse 37, he says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, Thou mayest. And he answered and said, he said that confession, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And he commanded the go chariot to stop still. Mm -hmm. And they both went out into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Amen. Amen. Why did he baptize him, Patrick? Because Philip never chased him. Right. Right. He only pursued him mm -hmm. as God showed him. Amen. If you hear today, you're something to the Lord's invitation. You come by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. If you hear today, you need prayer. You need repentance. You say, you know what? I'm done chasing it. You have to put the end in there. What are you done chasing? Amen. Amen. 
Because it's stealing your joy, it's stealing your happiness, and God is trying to, it's almost like you ignore that, that, that little light that comes on when you need your engine service, you say, oh, it'll go away. Ding, 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 And you're like, oh, it's going to go away. And then, boom, the engine blows up. Mm. God has an indicator, it's called the Holy Spirit, and it's ringing, it's ringing, it's ringing, it's telling you, it's telling you, it's telling you, it's telling you, look here, that ain't the situation for you, I'm telling you, you better beware, I'm telling you, you better beware, don't pursue anything that does not line up with God, Amen. don't pursue anybody who does not line up with God, they don't line up with God, God is trying to tell you, I'm telling you, you better get your stuff, you better get your bags, and pack, and, and get the heck out of it. Well, if it's your place, you better tell me, you need to be uh, listen to him, man. I love you. Hey, but we, it, it, we the Bible says, hey, how can two walk together unless they agree? Amen. If we can't agree about the Lord, we can't agree about that. Amen. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to encourage you with, with the scripture this morning. Amen. Please don't take it personal. Patrick will tell you, I had this plan. I had this sermon planned two months ago. Patrick will tell you. Mm -hmm. I planned my sermons maybe months and a half, sometimes even a year ahead. I got sermons planned on, man, from here to winter. So it's nothing never aimed at anybody. I'm trying to share information with you. The Holy Spirit is talking to your inside right now. Amen. Amen. What are you chasing? Is it prestige? <laughs> is it power? Yeah. What is it? God says, and two, when you make it up in your mind, let us be standing. When you make it up in your mind that I'm done chasing it, that means I'm through. Does that mean you just got to end your relationship? Well, that just depends. That depends. What is the spirit telling you? Mm -hmm. I'd rather obey God than to keep on going my way, trying to set up frustration later on. Because this time, watch this here. When the devil dash wants to destroy you, he comes to you through, he, 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 he bamboozles your mind through people that are close to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what he wants to do. So he'll frustrate you and frustrate you and frustrate you. And then if you keep not obeying God and keep choosing people and choosing careers and choosing things by yourself, what I end up happening is, the devil will arrange that big thing that you've been wanting. You, 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 you've been wanting. You can see it. You can, you can smell it. You can't wait to post it on Facebook. And, and man, you can't wait for everybody to see it. Hmm. And then he'll pull the wool out from under your eyes. Hmm. And say, I got you. Hmm. And then what, what we end up to happen to a lot of people. Is they turn from me and they say, you know what? If they're a woman, they say, you know what? Me ain't no good. Let me go to the other side. Mm -hmm. See, there's a psychosis behind all this. Yes, it is. There ain't no thing. So people, people don't just I wake up one day and say, I want to be gay. Mm -hmm. I want to be do drugs. I want to just get up. I want to be an alcohol. Nobody grows it. It's a process that the devil continues. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to show you, it's a psychosis behind this of bad decisions. And if it is that we keep choosing without God, Amen. the devil's looking for that knockout blow. Mm -hmm. And this last time might be the knockout blow that he's trying to carry you out with. Mm. That you'll give up on marriage forever. Mm. You give up on relationship without. He's ready for you to give up on church forever. Yes, he mm. is. He wants somebody to offend you. And boy, that's how he operates. He operates through offense. So he'll, he'll sign somebody to have some silly person in the church to rub you the wrong way, and now you're ready to leave the church because one person said something to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now when you leave the church, Peter says it's better for you not to know the way than to turn your back on, on the Lord now. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, everybody that you know that ever got baptized in that water, I'm telling you, if you knew what I knew, if you believe what I believe in in the Bible, I'm telling you, you would go get them and beg them, baby, daughter, son, auntie, get back in the Lord. Amen. Quit chasing that stuff, whatever you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heaven is too beautiful and hell is too long to keep playing with people 
who want to keep going on what they want to believe. They're chasing themselves. I've said enough. If you hear today, they fall in one of these categories. Why don't you come on this morning? Come on. Come on, come on this morning. Yeah. 